Hey up everyone and I'm finally back with another video and in this one I thought I'd just take you through the process of me painting this montage that I completed earlier this year. I think it was about February when I completed this. It's a commission and it was the owner that commissioned it. The dog's deceased now and his name was Riley. He was a border collie and he used to be an agility dog. So the studies in each corner are all agility studies. There's a tunnel one, an A-frame one, a couple of jumping ones and then there's an head study in the centre. Since I'm right-handed, I tend to start off on the left-hand side of painting and then work over to the right, so you're not leaning your hand on places that you've already painted and what have you. So I'm starting off on the, the top left, which is this tunnel study. And I think this study took the longest out of all its studies, to be honest. Tunnels do take quite a long time to paint and, and look right. There's a lot of folds and things like that going on in them and, and that kind of thing. And all that type of stuff is not what I'm so accustomed to painting either. I'm, I'm more a fur and, and, and that type of person. <laughs> I'm not so great at getting straight lines and perfect circles and all that kind of thing. That said, I think I have an easier time with tunnels than I do jumps. Doing jumps is really, you know, hard work for me. Sticking all the tape on to keep the uh, the really straight edges and what have you, and then getting the gradients and what have you, like on your poles and what have you, because they're, they're rounded and there's like a gradient on them. And then there's a change in colour as well, because they usually have coloured like stripes on them and things like that. So it's really hard going doing jumps. So I think tunnels, even though it probably took longer, it probably weren't quite as awkward as doing jumps, didn't have to stick tape on here or there and everywhere and that, which you'll see later on in painting because you'll see me doing a couple of jump ones. I always try to position the studies so that the, the subject is sort of moving into or looking into painting rather than moving or looking at at painting, which doesn't quite look right, so fortunately we had a couple of studies like you know reference photos where you were facing one way and a couple of where you were facing others so it were it were quite easy to fit them all in and make it look nice. I think the main issue with this one were the reference photo for the head study which were really poor to at least it were quite fuzzy and blurry and it had obviously been taken in really low light so it were really grainy and there weren't much detail to be seen in it and I'm usually quite strict when it comes to reference photos for paintings because of the amount of detail that I put in. I can get away with much worse reference photos when I'm doing charcoal drawings but when it comes to paintings it's another matter. So I decided to accept it but I kept the head study a lot smaller in comparison to the other studies than what I'd normally do it. I'd normally have it like being the main focus and having it bigger than other studies and then have the other studies a little bit smaller. So I said to the client, well, what I'll do is I'll just make that study smaller and make the other studies bigger so they're, they're all sort of pretty much the same size. And then because it's a smaller study, I don't have to try and get as much detail into it anyway than if I did it bigger. So I managed to get around it that way. We decided on a pale greenish colour. I'd done it on a previous montage that I did a few years ago and it looked quite nice. I decided to use it again on this one. It's all painted using acrylics and it's on Fabriano Artist Eco Hot Press at £300 weight. And the acrylics I were using were mostly Windsor & Newton Liquitex. And I'm using round brushes in various sizes and also rigger brushes mostly. I do like the Windsor & Newton Cotman but I do use other various brushes as well. So now I've done on tunnel and I'm working on dog. And this dog has got quite a shiny coat. It was taken in a sunny day I think and there were a lot of, a lot of sunshine reflecting off his coat in this uh, study. So. I think it took a little bit longer because they're getting all that shine on coat. I think most of the others were taken on like overcast days so there weren't as much tonal range in the darker parts of his coat to have to worry about. You might notice the end of the tunnel looks a little bit abrupt but later on I do use an airbrush on that in order to fade it out into that background colour a little bit. And I also did it with the grass which will be appearing underneath this very soon when I've finished this dog. So anyway, I've had more and more people asking me about Patreon and it is something that I've been considering for quite a bit of time and I need a little bit of encouragement to pluck up courage to do that. 
If I am to do it, it would be useful to find out what people want to see on Patreon in comparison to what I post here. So if anybody's got any specifics on the kind of thing that they'd like to see on a Patreon, then let me know underneath this video and I'll uh, take it all into account because I need ideas. I'm not entirely sure how other artists and what have you do their classes on Patreon. It's a case of trying to find out from the actual consumer what it is that they want and what they're willing to actually pay to see, basically. I still have literally all the footage that you've seen on my YouTube channel in real time, so I can post everything in real time. Obviously it will be extremely long, <laughs> but if that's what people want then that could be what people get. So let me know anyway and the more ideas the better so don't be shy about posting them. So meanwhile we're pretty much done with this study and here's a photo of it all done. This were obviously before I did the airbrushing for the end of that tunnel. I took a picture of it whilst I was still in process of doing painting. I did the uh, airbrushing a bit later. And now we're on to the next study and this is on the, uh, the bottom left hand side and it's the dreaded jumps and putting the tape in and trying to get them straight edges and trying to do the bands of colour and the gradient because it's a pole and all that kind of palaver. Looks alright when you take the tape off but looks pretty awful when the tape's still on. Sometimes I get little bits of paint that leak under tape as well so that's a little bit annoying. I much prefer painting the dogs to the jumps, for sure. I block in some base colour on the dog just because I had some spare paint left at end of a session but generally I like to just get the jump done first and then do the dog afterwards. On this painting I mistakenly left it until after I'd painted the old study before doing the airbrushing of the, the edges of the, the the parts of the wing where it fades away um, I'd airbrushed them so that they faded into green a little bit nicer and I waited until I'd painted the whole lot and the the paint that I used to airbrush that sort of gets on the dog a little bit if I'm not careful and fades it so I've started in a more recent uh, montage I've started doing the airbrushing once I've finished the jump but before I've finished the dog so that the dog's not been affected by the airbrushing and I did have to go over the, a couple of these dogs more than once after I'd airbrushed because of what I'd done. But you live and learn. I had to do some extra airbrushing on the right hand side at jump near where the dog's head is because it was getting a little bit too close to that head study which you can just see the pencil outline uh, next door to this. And it was getting a little bit close to that and poking into it a bit so I had to fade that out a little bit more because I didn't want it interfering with that too much. Overall, despite that jump, this study took a lot less time than the tunnel one and it's taken a lot less time in video as well as you probably noticed. There were also not as much work to do on dog because of the lighting conditions that the reference photo were taken in. There weren't as much shine and detail going on in court and that takes a little bit longer as well. Despite that, the tunnel study does look more interesting with the extra things going on in it with the tunnel and the grass and that kind of thing. With jumps, it's, unless you had like a, a background behind dog and they can all see behind them, then it, there's a lot less to them. It is a nice feeling though to get them done and to be able to move on to your next study. And this one's about done now, so I'm just finishing it off. And here's the photo of that one, all finished, again before I've done the airbrushing on the jump wings to make them fade into the background a bit nicer. So here I am on the head study, which is in the middle, and you'll also notice that I've finally airbrushed the two studies on the left hand side, so you can see that they're now fading into background colour a lot better. And the grass on the tunnel one is well it looks like it's almost disappeared I think it looks more like that in photo than it, it did in actual painting but I'm working on this headstone in our anyway and the 
reference photo, as I said earlier, were pretty awful. So I kept it on the smaller side. Normally an Ed study on a montage like this would be a lot bigger. And when I upload the photo of the more recent montage, where it had a really, really good quality photo for the Ed study, you'll see that I did that a lot bigger than what I've done this one here. I were a little worried that it looked like it were a little bit too close to that study in bottom left, but just like with that jump wing where I airbrushed it quite heavily, I also airbrushed the edge of the, the bottom of the bust of this portrait quite a lot afterwards and it actually afterwards it didn't look too bad at all. I could possibly put it a little smidgen higher but it, it turned out alright in the end anyway so I think client were happy with painting. It would have been nice if there were a reference photo of him looking a little bit more alert as well, lifting his ears up a little bit more, but like I say earlier, his, his owner didn't get any other decent headshots of him. Uh, somebody else took this for her as well and she just never got any nicer head photos of him, so I'm always advising people when you've got pets, always make sure you get some nice photos of them, because once they've gone, it's all you're going to have. And even if you don't ever have a portrait done, it means you've got some nice photos to look back on and even if you blow them photos up to put them on your wall or whatever it's just going to be nicer for you if you've got some nice photos of your pet once they've gone. And the nice thing about these montages is that you get to illustrate a lot of different aspects of the subject so you can illustrate the personality and you can illustrate the things that they liked to do and the general everyday lifestyle and all that kind of thing. So there's a lot more you can portray in a, a montage than just a, a standard Ed portrait. The main thing that restricts it obviously is budget because it takes a lot longer to do a, a montage. They're going to cost quite a bit more than just a standard Ed study and not everybody can afford one. So I'm coming towards the end of this Ed study now. I'm just working on the front at neck and things like that. And it turned out quite a bit nicer than what it could have done. I think it were a good call keeping it on the smaller side. I would have really struggled working from the reference photo if I'd have done it bigger. And in final photo for this, you can see that I've done the airbrushing, because obviously I did the airbrushing straight after finishing this before I moved on to my next studies and you can see it looks a lot better, it doesn't look so much like the other study is interfering with it and that's interfering with that other study as much. And now we're moving into the top right at painting for another jump study. There's only part of a jump showing in this study, just part at bar and then a little tiny little bit at wing. And you'll see that I actually didn't use any tape here and I actually managed to get it reasonably straight. It were another reference photo that we're taking on a sunny day, so there's some light and shadows going on. That means a little bit more detail in coat at dog as well, but obviously because there weren't really much, much at jump involved and it were mostly just dog, this study didn't take that long at all either. You'll also notice that I airbrushed the edges of that jump before I actually painted the dog in this case. Just like I mentioned before, I, I sort of learnt that during the process of this painting. So the, the studies on, on the right hand side, the jump got the airbrush treatment before I actually did the dog. So I didn't have to airbrush after I'd done the dog. So anyway, I've got some more non-collie paintings coming up, although there are a couple of collies mingled in amongst them. I have got some non-collie ones. I've just finished one actually and handed it across to a client today of a papillon. And before that, they were a Pyrenean sheep dog. And I've got a working cocker spaniel coming up next. And I've even got a cat in list, which I think I've already mentioned prior to this. And I'm also expecting to finally get this channel monetized within the next couple of months hopefully. So maybe that's going to be the first step to moving away from doing all commissions and being able to start doing my own thing and painting and drawing things that I want to do as well as doing commissions still. I'll probably still do commissions but I will cut down on them a little bit but saying that it won't be that difficult to cut down on them at some times because they can get really quiet. I mean they have been at this time of year and then obviously run up to Christmas they get busy. 
I also grow cacti and at this time of year I have some surplus cacti and I just like sell them to people and they help to tide me over during these quiet summer months. I don't get a lot for them, they just give me a little bit of extra pocket money on the side and a lot of it goes back into upkeep at plants anyway. But it makes me feel a bit better when I've got like so many gaps between orders for artwork and what have you and it just seems to be really dead. You know, like desert scene with tumbleweed rolling across it. And then all of a sudden you'll get one day when you've got about four or five people all descend on you at once and you think, oh, oh God. And then you think, like, you can't keep up with it all all of a sudden. You've been twiddling your thumbs for a couple of weeks and then everybody wants you at once. And it's like, just space yourselves out a little bit more, please. I guess it used to be the same when I was working in retail on checkout and it would be dead for so long and you'd have people all over the shop mulling around and then they'd all come to the till at the same time and it were absolutely mad for 10 minutes and then all of a sudden everybody had gone and it were dead again. And that's this study completed now. I really enjoyed putting the blue and red tones in his coat on this one. And moving on to the next study, the last one and it's in the bottom right hand corner of the painting and this one is where the dog's coming over the apex of an A-frame. Because an A-frame is so big compared to a dog I only painted a very small section of the top of it so that the dog was still the main focus of the study. So I didn't really have that much to paint on this one. I think the main thing with the top of A-frame is that because of the rubber surface, the rubber surface on the contact equipment in, in agility used to be wood but they changed it to rubber and it's made up of these tiny little rubber granules which are glued onto the surface to make it a lot better for the dog to grip and prevent slippage and things like that. And I spent a little bit of time using, similar to like a pointillism technique, just to do the little granules of rubber on the A-frame there. Again I airbrushed the A-frame before the wind dog, although I only had to airbrush around that bottom edge. So it probably wouldn't have interfered with dog as much, but I thought I'd best play it safe. I would say that doing these smaller studies probably takes more time for the size of them than what a larger study does, purely because it takes longer to get these minute details. It's much more painstaking work when you're trying to do the details really tiny compared to when you're doing larger work and your details are actually a lot bigger. So I think doing massive paintings is easier than when you're trying to work really small. So it might take less time overall, but for the size, it probably takes more time if you understand what I mean. It's obviously one of them things that you have to take into account when determining how much the price is going to be when somebody orders a painting that's got little studies in it like this. I mean, a popular compromise that a lot of my clients have is to just have a single head study, a main head study and then a smaller study underneath the bottom, maybe the dog's doing agility or just posing in countryside or whatever, but it's sort of like a compromise, it won't cost as much as having a full on montage. They are worth effort though because it's nice to see them come along and I think because they are smaller and even though it's harder to do details actually they look more detailed when you look at them from a bit further back they're sort of cute if you know what I mean <laughs> so I'm coming towards the end of this I'm just painting all his feathers that are flying up from his front legs in this one they took a little while to get right and then I'll show you some views of the actual completed painting So I've finally completed it and I'm just adding my signature here. Now, adding my signature is quite difficult for me. I don't find it easy to do writing of any type, so I've never enjoyed painting my signature on. I don't know whether other artists feel like that, but I do. And now we've got the finished piece and you can see that it, how it all fits together nicely and 
I'm quite pleased we had it turned out and if you liked this video please get a thumbs up because it helps it get pushed out to more people and helps my channel to grow and if you've not subscribed then if you subscribe that'll be brilliant as well thank you and I'll see you in my next video bye